Look what AEG have sent me to show you guys. Oh, we could have some fun with this, can we? Let's take a look in the box. She's um, gonna require some assembly, as you can see here. It's the handle area all needs to be put together. We've got two 4 amp hour batteries in this kit, and to charge those two 4 amp hour batteries, we strangely have two chargers. Instead of one dual charger, there's bunged in two single chargers, which I find really odd when companies do that. I know it'll be a price cutting thing, but you know, come on, double charger, eh? So this is what she looks like when you've put it all together. It's pretty simple. We've got four screws on that side, four screws on that side. Do up your cable here and you're pretty much ready to go. Bung in your, your wobbly one here. That is to not break your wrists and your arms and everything when this thing spins around. Uh, so let's now take a look at the auger. No, actually first I better tell you the speeds. So we've got three speeds on this thing. In the front here, speed one, 100, speed two, 150, speed three, 200 RPM, easily just changed by the button there. And we've got a status light here for if you have a jam or an overload. And that's pretty much all there is to it, apart from, of course, how you make it work. We've got a forward and reverse here, got a safety trigger on the side, and the trigger to make it go. Having a look at the auger, it is 250 millimeters or 10 inch. It's got a pin in the top, of course, to hold it in place. It's a 19 to 20 millimeter hole here in the top to go on the shaft of the post hole borer. It's a pretty standard size. You can buy augers like this almost anywhere to go on the tool. So if you want to do smaller holes, 100 mil, 200 mil, 150, maybe even 300, we'll try that. I've got some augers over here. Maybe we'll give them a try today. Like I say, 100, 150, 200, and 300 sitting there. But first, we will start with the 250 that it comes with. It's got a couple of blades on the bottom and a nice corkscrew to get you started. So we will now go and find somewhere to dig a hole. Seeing as it's shaped like this, I figured this might be an easy way to put the auger on. Although, it doesn't seem to be lining up too well. Get in there, bugger. There we go. All good. Clipped on, ready to go. Yeah, she's all good, good. Okay, I've got the two four amp hour batteries that came with the kit. They are both fully charged, just come off the charger. Let's go drill some holes. Okay, maiden hole, we're gonna start on the slowest speed and we will ramp it up if need be. Let's go. Yeah. Let's take it up to the next speed. Oh, she's cutting out already. Let's take it up to speed three. Doesn't like this Kaikuya grass by the looks. Now, I think it tripped on my leg then. Right, I'm gonna show you this in action. Okay, that cuts the tool out so it starts to spin if it catches on anything. Hits that, you can hear it clicking. Just cuts it off and then you need to take your finger off the trigger and away you go again. Oh, see I hit a rock or something there and it gave me a good kick. There is a bit of gravel and stuff in this hole by the looks. So this hole is a bit annoying. There's quite a lot of rock debris like this in there. It's clearly drainage or something and I'm hitting something a real solid layer there now so not too good for the auger so I think we'll go move somewhere else okay hopefully this is a better spot when you are digging holes through thick grass it often pays to just cut a little hole out with a spade first so you don't get grass and stuff tangled at the bottom that stops the actual blades from cutting into the grass uh, into the ground sorry we shouldn't have a problem here. There's very little grass, feels a lot softer. Hopefully there is no metal here like there was in the last hole. Okay, got it on top speed, I think. Yep, lucky light. Bring it on my leg.
hit my leg again. So, as you can see, she's going down into some heavy clay now. And you could hear it struggling a little bit, but it didn't cut out apart from when it catches a little bit and hits my leg. Almost like it needs a slightly wider handle on it so you can get a better grip so it doesn't twist so easily. Go a tiny bit further. Now, what happened then is it missed my first leg and hit my second leg, thankfully. So, yeah, got to be aware of that. Oh, geez, there's a bit of torque there. Let's um, take it down to the low speed. Oh. No, nah, bit too much resistance down there. But that's actually deep enough for what we want anyway. How deep have we gone there? About 600, 650, two feet or so. That's enough for planting a tree. Next up, I'm gonna try these two. So on the left, we have a 100 millimeter auger and on the right, a 300 millimeter or one foot. That's gonna, <laughs> gonna try and spin me around for sure. But we'll do the 100 first, just to show you how it would work with different augers that don't come with the tool. So I've done two holes with the 250 millimeter auger. We're down one bar on each battery. Let's see how we go now with the 100 millimeter or four inch auger. Top speed. Oh, trying to see how long it would go before cutting out. It's got a fair bit of torque because I think that's still triggered on my leg rather than the tool overloading. So now to get that out a bit easier, I'm going to reverse it out. Push the reverse button on the trigger handle here. And there we go. That went in a piece of cake. Let's try the big one. Okay, we've got the big boy on. I don't know how well this is going to cut into the grass because it's not only the capacity of the thing you're driving your auger bits with, but the auger bits themselves are super important. And this is a cheap one with badly angled cutting blades, so I don't hold out a lot of hope. We're gonna start on the lowest speed. Here we go, one foot auger. We are, I oh don't know. She's walking around. Let's go full whack. Look at that, she's off. Oh, trigger it on my leg again. I think that hole's almost what we need. Right, so we got into the clay again. That did so much better than I thought it was gonna do. I didn't know if the machine would have the torque and I didn't know if that auger would actually be any good because of its shitty cutting surface. But we've done a big enough hole there. Once you dig out all that loose stuff in there, I think that was pretty good. Let's take a look at the batteries here. Both still showing three bars. Right, what's next? So, we've now got a 200 millimeter auger on here. I'm just using this to show you the difference in different types of auger bits. So this one has a double spiral. The 300 and the 250 just had the single spiral. Now these double ones go a lot quicker. You can dig holes much faster. Here's hoping anyway, else I'll look silly on video. Here we go, top speed, 200 millimeter, eight inch auger. Thank you. 
so much better with a good auger bit as you can see just like any other tool you know you buy a drill and you're trying to drill through with some crappy hardware store cheapo bin drill bit you know the drill bits are blunt and hopeless same goes with this put a good auger bit on it and you'll go through much quicker so when you come to buy some auger bits for this thing get a good one still showing three bars When you've got too much grass and it causes a mat like that over the teeth, your blade will not cut. So if you're not going anywhere fast or slow, clean those off and you'll find all of a sudden you'll be digging holes again. Let's go. See the difference that made <laughs> just by cleaning off those blades. Now, when you use an auger, post hole borer, whatever you want to call it, people tell you to lift it up and down all the time to clear the dirt. And that is true of some auger bits, but I've found with these double spiral, they fire the dirt up so well, you can see it all on all the all the pieces of the auger there, drives it up, shoots it out the top, and basically you can go straight down in one go and not even have to clear the hole, because it clears it for you. Two 250 millimeter holes, one 100 millimeter hole, one 300 millimeter hole, two 200 millimeter holes, and we are about halfway on our batteries. So, I was just trying to go one shot as deep as I can and it got to the point where I couldn't hold it anymore. But it didn't cut out, so just got plenty of Stuff like that's always fun. You get it wrapped around your auger. If it's not cutting in, pull it out and check it because no point pushing down and straining your guts when you don't have to. Let's go. So as you can see, when there's nothing on it, it goes in much quicker. Planted here before, I think. It's died. It's potting mix. The tool is starting to struggle. We're down to one bar on each battery. Got a fair bit of torque there though. That's me trying to stall it again, but it hit my leg. Look at all that. <laughs> okay, will we get one more hole out of it? So, ideally, if you dig a square hole like I've done here, it will be much easier to start your auger. You won't have the grass matting around your cutting blades. Not only that, if you're doing a hole for plants, if you're putting trees down in here, like we are here, then ideally you want a square hole, because if you plant a plant into a round hole and it's hard soil, the roots will just follow and go round and round, 
and it will basically strangle itself. Won't be able to get any good support roots down, makes it easier to blow over, easier to drown when there's lots of rain. So if you cut a square hole, the roots will go out, they'll hit the corner, and it's pretty hard for them to do a right angle, so they'll keep going straight through. Whereas once they start following that circle, they just go round and round, and sometimes you'll pull out a tree that's been in there for years, and the roots are basically the same size diameter as when you planted it. Anyway, we're not here to talk about planting trees, we're here to dig holes. Can we get one more out of this thing? Let's go. That's a good looking hole. Will this be the last hole? Too much stuff stuck around the blade. Just simple stuff like grass, mats up on the teeth there, stops from cutting. There's the, there's the culprit there. See where the blade was? It's just trying to push dirt through dirt rather than cut the dirt. Amazing how strong grass is. That's why you dig a hole first. Oh. Struggling a little bit now. Me and the tool. <laughs> That's the fastest speed. Not even enough to throw the um, clay off at this stage. How many holes have we done? Let's count them up. So I got 12 holes of various sizes with the 250 on it. You say looking at around 10 holes depending on the soil on a pair of 4 amp hour batteries. So you know if you've got nice sandy loomy soil you might get whoa, you know another 50% another more holes. It's something hard with a lot of rocks and stuff in it and there's a lot of stopping and starting and trying to push its way through you might only get eight or something if you're putting up a short length of fence or planting a few trees then it's no bother at all and yes this tool is currently leaning on an old exploded bomb <laughs> don't ask me where that came from so what do you reckon is it any good what do you want to see it up against let me know down in the comments what you think and I'll see you all on another one again soon. Cheers AEG for flicking me this. It's um, been very handy digging these holes for trees over the past few days. Remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff and I'll see you fellas next time. Cheers guys. What's over there? Oh look, might be another bomb. Bomb, did you bomb, bomb. Oh. Uh...